Hello everyone, CJ here. This time I'm going to present you with a very special class, the Warlock. Warlocks are spellcasters, yet due to their special class mechanics, they are versatile enough to be built into equally decent melee warriors or beguiling illusionists. When playing this class, you can forget much about what you have learned from other classes because Warlock's mechanics are just so unique. Watch past the intro to learn more. Unlike wizards who gain their spellcasting ability through study, warlocks receive theirs through the pack they form with a patron. Power at the price of servitude. Which means that thematically, warlocks relationship with their patron is one of obligation rather than devotion as clerics do to their deities. It also means that the relationship is more personal. The patron could be of any origin. The types available in the player's handbook are the fiendish demons and devils, fey lords and ladies, and cosmic extraplanar elder gods. These packs also serve as their archetype. Different patrons provide access to exclusive sets of spells and class features. The Fiend Patron set is more combat oriented. The Arch Face set focuses on charms and illusions, which are useful in and out of combat. The Great Old One's features are centered around mind control and telepathy. The Warlock class is a little more complicated than others. It has multiple branching class options. At level 1, they get to choose a patron, at level 2, the modular Eldritch Invocation, and at level 3, one of three pack boons. Due to their wide range of options, Warlock is a relatively versatile class. They make great damage dealers, social butterflies, or a combination of those. Let's look at the class more closely by moving on to the class basics. The Warlock's hit dice is 1d8, the average size. Without any modifier bonus or penalties, they start with 8 hit points and gain the average of 5 hit points per level. They are proficient with light armor and simple weapons. They have saving throw proficiency in wisdom and charisma, so they are better at resisting, mind controlling, and banishing effects and spells. They can choose 2 skills from the options you see here. But there is an Eldritch Invocation that they can take at level 2 that gives them proficiency in both persuasion and deception, so you should look ahead if you want to create your ideal character. At level 1, you choose the Warlock's Patron. For this class, I will choose the Fiend. The Fiend gives the Warlock Dark One's Blessing. Whenever the Warlock reduces a hostile creature to 0 hit points, she gets Charisma Modifier plus Warlock levels worth of temporary hit points. Utilized correctly, this feature can make the Warlock less vulnerable in combat. The Patron also expands the Warlock's spell list with a unique set. This doesn't mean that the Warlock automatically knows the spell they still need to choose them as part of the spells they know. As spellcaster, Warlock can cast spells starting at level 1. They use Charisma as their spellcasting ability and their spellcasting mechanics is relatively easy. Their spell slot progression, however, is unique, but we will talk about that later. They start with 2 cantrips and know a total of 2 spells chosen from their class spell list and expanded patron spell list. When they level up, check the spells known column on their class table to see if the number of spells they know increases. If it does, then they can learn a new one from their class or expanded spell list. But whether they can learn new spells or not, at level up, they can replace a known spell with another spell from the available options. As usual, the characters need to have the same level spell slot as the spell's level to learn it, which means that they need to be able to cast the spell to learn it. Warlocks don't get too many spells, but at least they have the spells prepared at all time, so that's one less complication for them. Check out the class features and spellcasting video if you need to refresher on spellcasting. They can cast ritual spells only if they pick certain class feature or eldritch invocation at higher levels. And their spellcasting focus is arcane focus. Now, let's have a look at their unique spell slots mechanic. Warlocks have a very small number of spell slots, but they get to fully recharge them after short rests, while other classes fully recharge after long rests. Other classes get spell slots of various spell levels as they level up. But Warlock's spell slot level is uniform and it's determined by the class table. So that means that even if they want to cast lower level spells, they will have to use their higher level or equal level spell slots. The highest spell slot level they get is level 5. But they can cast level 6, 7, 8 or 9 spells once a day using their Mystic Arcanum, which is reusable after a long rest. At level 2, they get to pick 2 Eldritch Invocations. Eldritch Invocation gives the Warlock special abilities. 
they are like mini class features that they get to mix and match. Agonizing Blast, for example, lets the Warlock add their Charisma modifier to their Eldritch Blast cantrip damage. Beguiling Influence gives the Warlock proficiency in Deception and Persuasion skills. At higher level, they can pick more Eldritch Invocation. But their options are sometimes restricted, because some of the invocations has prerequisites that need to be fulfilled before they can be chosen. Some of the prerequisites can be as simple as level requirement. Some are more specific, like knowing the Eldritch Blast cantrip or choosing certain pack boons at level 3. Luckily, they can swap out one Eldritch Invocation every time they level up, so that you don't have to keep some Eldritch Invocation slot empty while waiting for the invocation you really want to become available. At level 3, Warlocks get to pick one out of three pack boons. Pack of the Chain lets the Warlock learn the fine familiar spell and can cast it as a ritual. It's not counted against their spell's known number. It also expands the familiar option with Imp, Pseudo Dragon, Quasit, and Sprite. Additionally, when the Warlock take an attack action, they can forgo one of their attacks to allow the familiar to make one attack using its reaction. Pack of the Blade lets the Warlock create any melee weapon using that action. The options come from the player's handbook's weapons list, including martial weapons like great swords. They are also proficient with it, even if they don't have proficiency with the normal version. The weapon counts as magical for the purpose of overcoming resistance and immunity. It disappears if it is more than 5 feet away from the creator for 1 minute or more. It is also possible to turn magic weapons into pack weapon. You can read more about it in the player's handbook. With Pack of the Tome, the patron gives the warlock a grimoire called a Book of Shadows that lets them choose 3 cantrips from any class. They are not counted against their normal number of cantrips known, but they can only be cast while the warlock has the book. If the book is lost, the warlock can spend 1 hour to perform a ceremony to receive a replacement from their patron. The previous book is then destroyed. At this level, the warlock can also cast level 2 spells like Darkness. At level 4, they get their first ability score improvement, and they learn another cantrip for a total of 3. At level 5, Warlock's cantrip power improves like other spellcasters, but for Warlocks knowing Eldritch Blast, they get an extra attack with their Eldritch Blast cantrip, but they have to roll to attack separately for each blast, which is different to how other cantrips work. Eldritch Blast is the Warlock's signature damage dealing cantrip. While they are not required to choose it, it can become very powerful when combined with other Warlock features. At this level, they can also cast level 3 spells like Fear. At level 6, Fiend Warlocks get Dark One's own luck. When making an ability check or a saving throw, they can add a d10 to the roll. It can be done after seeing the initial roll, but before any of the roll's effects occurs. It is reusable after a short or long rest. Level 7, they get level 4 spell slots and learn level 4 spells like Blight. Level 8, they get their second ability score improvement. At level 9, they can learn level 5 spells like Contact Other Play. Level 10, the Fiend Warlock gets Fiendish Resilience. They can choose to gain resistance in one type of damage, like fire, cold, or bludgeoning. But attacks from magical or silver weapons ignore this immunity. They also learn their fourth cantrip. Level 11, the Eldritch Blast cantrip can make three separate attacks. They also get Mystic Arcanum and can choose one level 6 spell as part of their Arcanum. That spell can be cast with this feature once per long rest. Because Mystic Arcanum is not a spell slot, it can't be used to cast lower level spells. It can only cast Arcanum spells as is. At higher class levels, they can learn higher level spells with this feature, but they can't be replaced once chosen. An example of a level 6 spell they can cast is Flash to Stone. Level 12, third ability score improvement. Level 13, they can learn level 7 Mystic Arcanum spells like Finger of Death. Level 14, they get their last patron feature. When the Warlock hit a creature with an attack that doesn't make them roll saving throw, they can instantly transport it through the lower planes. The creature disappears and returns at the end of the Warlock's next turn. As long as the target doesn't have the Fiend creature type, it takes 10d10 psychic damage. This feature is reusable after a long rest. Level 15, they can learn level 8 Mystic Arcanum spells like Power Word Stun. Level 16, 4th Ability Score Improvement Level 17, the Eldritch Blast Cantrip can make 4 separate attacks. The Warlock can learn level 9 Mystic Arcanum spells like True Polymorph. Level 18 Warlock doesn't get any new features, 
but they get their 8th and last Eldritch Invocation slot. Level 19, they get their 5th and last Ability Score improvement. Finally, at the maximum level of 20, they get Eldritch Master. Once between long rests, they can spend 1 minute asking their patron for A. They will regain all their expended spell slots, but not their Mystic Arcana. And that's your 20 levels of the Edgy Warlock. There are 3 Warlock Patrons. As you have seen, the Fiend Patron provides various combat-related features. Its extended spell list let the Warlock pick area of effect damaging spells like Fireball, increasing their potential combat damage output. But no matter what Patron the Warlock choose, their single target damage output is still pretty powerful. The combination of Eldritch Blast Cantrip, Hex Spell, and Agonizing Blast Eldritch Invocation is devastating, and it's universally accessible. The other two patrons are centered around enemy control and utility, but the Archfey patron provide more features and spells that are also more acceptable to use in social situations. As for the Great Old One, I don't think Everett's Black Tentacles make great conversation starter. The main difference here is that they also provide access to some damage dealing spells and telepathy. In general, Warlocks are versatile, but they can't cast many spells unless they get plenty of short rest throughout the day so they have to rely on cantrips or invocations to keep themselves going. In terms of multiclassing, it's a popular class for power gamers to multiclass into. Eldritch Blast, Hex, and the Fiend Patron's Dark One's Blessings are great combat spells and features. Fighter Lock, Paladin Lock, Bard Lock, Sorcerer Lock are pretty common combinations. On the other hand, Warlocks may want to multiclass as Sorcerers, and with Charisma being the Sorcerer's spellcasting ability, they make a great fit. However, Warlock multiclassing spell slot is treated differently. They are separate but compatible with each other. Other spellcasting classes can use Warlock spell slot and vice versa. Mystic Arcanum, however, can only be used for Warlock's Arcanum spells. It's not compatible with other classes. The Warlock is a pretty powerful class. Many players may want to play or multiclass into it, but try not to forget about the theme of the class and the character's relationship with their patron. Incorporate it into your roleplay to make an interesting character. Work together with your dungeon master to add drama to your character's relationship with his or her patron. Just please don't make another min-max soulless warlock character. Alright, that's it from me. Thanks for watching the Dungeons & Dragons 5e Warlock Class Guide. If there's anything here that you don't understand, you can always rewatch the Learn How to Play Dungeons & Dragons series or ask in the comment section. If you like this video, subscribe to the channel and press the bell button for more videos like this. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter to get notified on future releases and a heartfelt thank you to my patrons at Patreon for helping to make this series possible. If you like my work and want to help the channel, please consider becoming a patron. CJ, over and out.